Hi everyone, this is Mike, and this video is going to be dealing with how to perform accumulation studies with Inventor. So, assuming you've already watched the video on how to set up this carrier assembly and the conveyor path, this is where you should have left off. Um, the first thing you should notice here is that this little trolley and uh, that trolley is off the path. That's sloppy by... that's sloppy on my part. Uh, when the uh, original path and the interpolating spline are on top of each other, it's harder to pick the correct one to constrain to. So, if you need to get rid of a constraint, you can press F8 to view the constraints. And so this is the one I want to get rid of. And I can reconstrain it. And if it becomes hard to figure out which is the spline and which is the the arc, you can go select other and you'll be able to choose which one you need from the dialog here. So that's that one. I need to get rid of this one too. Okay, so that's taken care of. You can press F9 to hide constraints. So essentially, like I said in the last video, an accumulation study uh, is basically a study of how many carriers can fit behind a stop in a certain section of conveyor. So to determine how many carriers can fit, we have to determine the job center distance. So that specifies the distance between the the leading trolley on the first carrier to the leading trolley on the sequential carriers. So we want to have a job center uh, parameter and if we go into the model parameters here this is basically where all the numerical data of the model is stored. They can be from the model, they can be uh, reference, they can be user parameters, they can be imported from Excel so you can see here that the 2.5 inches are the numerical dimensions here. So right now we're going to add a numeric parameter. We're going to call that job center. And we're going to call that 350 inches. So once we have our job center distance uh, determined, uh, what we should do now is determine where's our stop point. So to do that, finish the sketch and go to 3D model. We can go to a work point and we'll just say, we'll put the work point right here at the end. So that's going to be the stop. And so what we need to do now is we need to figure out how many carriers can fit behind this stop using a job center distance of 350 inches. So to figure out how many fit, we can do something we've we did, did to set up the conveyor path. So we can make a rectangular pattern, choose the point we just drew for the stop. We can choose this as our path. And instead of changing it to the curve's length, we can keep it at spacing, but in, in, instead of this one inch increment, the increment will be job center. So you can see it put another point at 350 inches off the first point. And from here we can figure out how many carriers are going to fit. So say I have four that puts one there, 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 and there. So four is going to be the maximum carriers that's, that are going to fit because if I fit, try to fit five in there, that puts the point there and the carrier assembly can't fit behind that. So back to four, hit OK.
can make this sketch visible again. <clears throat> so now that we've determined where on the conveyor path that the trolleys are going to be aligned with, um, what we need to do now is we need to replicate a carrier assembly at each of those locations. So in order to replicate this carrier assembly, you can't just copy it, you can't pattern it because uh, in uh, 2D Sketch, patterns can't follow a specific path. So let's take a look at what we can do here. So as of now, this carrier assembly is constrained to the path. It can only move along the path. So that means that the location on this path can be controlled by a single dimension. And so I'm going to create that dimension from the origin. So I'm going to draw a line up here. And I'm going to lock it in place. And I'm going to dimension from there to the center point of the front trolley there. So that's determined the distance here. So if I type in one value here, it moves to a specific location. And if I type in a different value, it goes to a different location. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this entire sketch, con conveyor included. Because if you copy without the conveyor, the constraints won't. Uh, stay put. However, there is one small caveat here. Uh, you can't copy projected geometry between sketches. So, since our interpolating spline that we have everything constrained to is projected, we need to break that link. So, need to find that. break the link so it can be a standalone geometric feature on its own and once that link is broken everything becomes unconstrained so we need to select the spline and apply a lock constraint to keep it from moving And that's similar, similarly, that's why we locked this in place to keep it from moving when we copy the different sketches. So if I go to finish sketch here, you should now be able to take this first sketch, highlight the XY plane, and paste it three times for a total of four carriers. So when the sketches have finished pasting it may not look like you changed much but if we go and look at our parameters here we can see that these dimensions of the first sketch have been replicated. So if I go and change this one to a different value, you can see what that did. It changed the location of this carrier, moved it over here while keeping the rest over here. So now we have these four uh, carriers that need to have their dimensions set to the coordinates of the points we have. So we need to export the coordinates of these points and we have a macro that can do that which we saw in the last video. So I go to tools can export work points
have to make sure this is enabled. So we have our work points exported. Um, it's included all of the ones that make up the initial curve, but we don't need to include those. We only need the last four. So those ones are going to be there. So we have the XYZ coordinates, and now we need to format this data into uh, a format that Inventor can read. So Inventor parameters have the following format they have the name so we'll call this x1 x2 x3 and x4 the numerical value of the parameter the unit so inventor's default unit is centimeters so this is what the macro exports as and a comment so I don't need a comment so I'm going to leave those blank so as of now, we're only interested in the x dimensions since those are controlling the positions. We don't need the uh, y and z. So I can go into Inventor, back into the parameters. I can import these. And you can see that those imported. So x1 is this, and x4 is this, and etc. So now what we need to do is we need to set these values equal to the, those of the coordinates that were imported. And so we're going to do that using an iLogic script. So if I go to the Manage tab, I'm going to add a rule called accumulation. This rule is going to be suppressed initially, and it is going to have the following code. So I'll provide this code template in the description. Essentially what it does is it selects the parameter in the model which you need to change and it will set it equal to the parameter that was imported from Excel. So uh, this represents the first uh, parameter that you're going to change, D10, so this is going to be 10. The increment is how many spaces are between the the sequential dimensions. So that will be, in this case, 3. And this represents the last parameter that's going to be changed, which would be 19. And then this represents the Excel parameter that you want to start linking to. In this case, it's going to be 1. So that script is there, and if we go into the iLogic browser, the rule that we just created is there. We can just click it, run the rule, and you can see it adjusted the parameters accordingly. So that's essentially how accumulation studies are done. So thank you for watching.